Okay, so let's uh, continue our discussion of A Gesture Life by uh, Chang Rei Li. Um, so we're going to move on to Chapter 8, and both Chapter 8 and Chapter 9 uh, take place or are memories of uh, Doc Hatta's uh, service in the military. So uh, it's dealing with um, the events uh, surrounding the arrival of the Comfort Women uh, to the camp and uh, how Hatta is placed in the role as uh, the medical officer in charge of maintaining uh, the health and sort of readiness, ableness of uh, these young women to uh, service uh, the soldiers. Um, we'll be introduced to uh, Corporal Endo, and he is um, an underling, so he is sort of lower in the military hierarchy than uh, Hatta, uh, but he's not as, uh, Hatta's not as high as uh, Captain Ono. So uh, if you sort of keep um, these characters' uh, names and ranks uh, straight in your mind, uh, it's sort of a good idea and you kind of get a sense of how uh, sort of important hierarchy is in the military system and how certain power and privileges are um, distributed uh, based on this uh, strict hierarchy, um, the positions of each man. Uh, so Corporal and Endo is going to uh, enact uh, a kind of rebellious act uh, and he becomes a kind of uh, almost like a masculine other figure. Uh, he's ostracized and um, an outsider uh, in the sort of homosocial uh, community of uh, male soldiers. Uh, they make fun of him and his his affliction or his sickness uh, is uh, becomes part of um, how he relates with the the uh, comfort women who arrive in the camp. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the overall uh, sentiment of the camp uh, of the soldiers at this time during the war. Uh, so this the arrival of the the comfort women sort of coincides with. Um, rumors of uh, a strong offensive by the American and British forces. So the Japanese Imperial Army is sort of uh, faltering and uh, there are rumors of uh, that the war will soon uh, be over, uh, that they're losing, uh, that um, they're, they're going to be defeated and the whole Japanese Empire is sort of collapsing. Um, so the soldiers in camp uh, fear their demise and fear, uh, you know, death is around the corner. Um, so this heightens the, the tension in camp and causes uh, almost like an outbreak of uh, hysteria. Um, and the men will have symptoms and a range of sort of symptomatic behaviors and um, sicknesses sort of that uh, s illustrate how how they react to uh, the sort of faltering um, empire and uh, their fears of death and the collapse of uh, that you know grand fantasy of uh, their country's superiority and success or conquest of uh, the Pacific uh, countries. So uh, we'll talk about uh, some of these issues in Chapter 8. So we're introduced to uh, the character of Corporal Endo, and he is almost like a patient of Doc Hatta's. Uh, as a kind of medical officer, he seeks out uh, Doc Hatta to get some advice and uh, to sort of help him, and uh, he's also sort of friends with him as well um, and looks up to him. But Endo is sort of almost obsessed or sickly, kind of fascinated with uh, pornography. So uh, he sort of has all these uh, cards, images of uh, naked women, uh, pornographic images, and it's almost driving him sort of, um, uh, you know, past some sort of mental breaking point and had a fears that 
this young man is mentally unstable. Uh, and there is some sort of interesting connection between sex and uh, death, um, where you have these men sort of at the brink of their own demise. And then, uh, as he describes, there are sort of soldiers, comrades who are ravenous uh, for any uh, women. Um, so it almost seems as if, you know, the closer they get to death, the more ravenous and uh, sexually sort of uh, lustful and uh, uncontrollable uh, they get as uh, soldiers. So Corporal Endo, uh, they fear or had a fear that he's sick. Uh, there's also sort of, he has some behaviors that sort of target him. Uh, as being um, different or um, unusual, peculiar uh, from the other men. Um, and uh, he, uh, one of the things that he does is sort of mimic a, women, a woman's voice. He imitates uh, actresses, film stars, uh, and pretends, so he uses sort of like a feminine voice and imagines these conversations. And uh, this starts rumors that he is uh, an, a homosexual um, and uh, he's even sort of viewed as kind of a threat to the other men. This is on page 158 at the top. Um, well, starting on 157. Um, sometimes if one stood outside the communications tent, one could hear him talking to himself in a sing-song voice pretending, as he readily admitted to me, to be a film star like Marlene Dietrich or Claudette Colbert in the midst of a romantic seduction. Of course, the corporal didn't speak English, but he memorized well enough certain dramatic tones and utterances such that his gibberish seemed almost real. Others heard him do this as well, and there was soon suspicion among some of the officers that the corporal was a homosexual and one of the captains even asked me if in my opinion he was a threat to the other men like a contagion that should be checked uh, so here we have an example of kind of homophobia and uh, the fear of anybody who doesn't sort of conform to masculine uh, norms um, but uh, Hada sort of sees the corporal as just uh, one of many sick men uh, who have uh, some unusual or peculiar symptoms at this time during the war. So uh, it seems to be there, the closer they get to death, the more peculiar and sick uh, the soldiers become. Um, so on page 158, he says, um, I knew, of course, that the corporal was constituted like most men, and not because of his interest in pornography, which was all too typical and rampant around the base, his unusual conduct was, I believe, a simple byproduct of the deepening atmosphere of malaise and fear. I myself had developed a minor skin condition on the lower calves and I was treating many others for similar irritations such as boils and scalp, scalp rashes and an unusual variety of fungal infections. It seemed the whole camp was afflicted. Uh, so it's not just Corporal Endo who is exhibiting sort of hysteria or sickness or traumatic neuroses. It's the whole camp is sort of breaking out in um, anxiety uh, uh, facing uh, these rumors of uh, the end of the war and that uh, they're going to lose and there's almost like this imminent sense of doom or, or death on the horizon. Um, so Corporal Endo, he becomes kind of this uh, masculine other, uh, somebody who doesn't quite fit in or conform to social norms. And this becomes more evident uh, when he switches his sort of opinion. First, he can't wait for the comfort uh, women to arrive at the camp. He wants to be almost the first person to talk to them, to visit them. Of course, this is not realistic since he's only a corporal and uh, you, your access to the comfort women is determined by your military rank and even amongst the same men of your rank you have to sort of choose a number uh, you get a lot or a number and that's the order in which you're allowed to uh, visit uh, the uh, women 
Um, so for first, Corporal Endo is very sort of, uh, he anticipates meeting the girls and he seems almost, you know, obsessed with uh, um, uh, their arrival. But it seems as if as soon as they do arrive, uh, his mood change. He becomes much more uh, dark and um, unsure and more anxious. Uh, and his whole sort of position changes after he sees uh, the young girls. So on page 168, uh, he tells Hada that uh, he's decided not to visit those girls. Um, and he says, yesterday after I saw them arrive in the camp, I suddenly didn't think about it anymore. I don't know why. I know I must be sick, Lieutenant. I do, in fact, feel sick. But I didn't come to ask for any treatment or advice. I don't want my lot anymore, but I realized I didn't want any of the others to have it either. Um, so he gives uh, his lot, his number, to Hada, and uh, it seems as if... Um, you know, he's no longer interested in seeing or meeting, uh, visiting the girls at all. And perhaps he is responding to the treatment of the uh, young girls when they arrive. Um, so there's five of them in total. So five girls arrive in the camp and they are there to uh, provide sexual services for 200 men um, in that uh, encampment. Uh, so day and night. Um, and uh, they arrive, you know, and their presence is, you know, somewhat shocking. Um, um, so on page uh, 165, we have a description of the girls as they arrive. Uh, the commander must have spoken, for Captain Ono ordered the older woman to gather the others and march them up the steps. The girls looked frightened and all but one ascended quickly to the veranda landing. The last one hesitated, though just momentarily, and the captain stepped forward and struck her in the face with the back of his hand, sending her down to one knee. He did not seem particularly enraged. Without saying anything, he struck her again, then once more, and she fell back limply. She had not cried out. Um, so the girls are, uh, you know, treated um, quite brutally. Um, their appearance is sort of, um, you know, they're not glamorous starlets as Endo imagined. These are, you know, poor uh, young women who have been, you know, taken from uh, their homes and treated poorly. And here they are being beaten uh, and abused. Um, the uh, colonel will also sort of uh, drag uh, around uh, the one girl uh, who turns out to be uh, Kute's uh, sister. So this is on page 173. Uh, she was crying softly. He guided her to the step of the porch, and it was there that her legs suddenly lost power and buckled under her. The colonel took hold of her wrist and barked at her to get up, the sharp report of his voice sundering the air. She didn't respond or move, but there lay there feebly, her head lolling against the step. She was sobbing wearily for her sister, whose name I thought she was saying was Kute, which meant bottom or last. The colonel made a low grunt and jerked her up by the wrist, and it looked as if she were dragging a skinned billy goat or calf, her body thudding dully against the step and then being pulled across the rough planking of the porch. Um... So he, he's treating uh, the young girl as, you know, as if she was an animal. Uh, he says they make it uh, a skinned billy goat or a calf. Um, so her treatment as kind of is very dehumanizing, and it seems as if Cor Corporal Endo maybe is having a reaction to uh, the sort of almost like disillusioned by the, the young girls who uh, are there to um, service the men. And at the end of that chapter, uh, Corporal Endo, Endo flees into the jungle, uh, sort of abandoning his uh, post. Um, and we have um, Hada, you know, just sort of caught in shock uh, at um, the treatment of the young ladies. And he doesn't quite know what to feel or what to think. Um, but he has been put in charge of their medical well-being. So... 
he is sort of the medical officer in charge of their health and well-being.